Senator Di Natale. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting uh, President. Uh, uh, I rise today to discuss a matter of uh, crucial importance to the nation, and it's the question of uh, dental health. Uh, Australians find themselves in a very curious position when it comes to health care. Uh, for some reason, we have decided to treat the mouth as separate from the rest of the body. So if somebody has a problem with an ear or an elbow or their eye, they can uh, go off to see their GP or to a hospital and their treatment is likely to be covered under Medicare. Uh, not a problem if you're not, uh, you don't have the ready cash available. Uh, you can get your treatment done covered through the medical uh, insurance scheme, publicly funded insurance scheme known as Medicare. But for some reason, if you've got a sore tooth, uh, the uh, treatment options uh, are very, very different. So if you can't afford to get the care done immediately, um, chances are you'll leave it, the problem will get worse, uh, you'll end up at the GP, uh, you might get some pain relief and some antibiotics, and eventually, if that doesn't sort the problem, you'll end up in one of Australia's public hospitals. Uh, the reality is that the high costs of dental care mean that uh, a number of people, uh, uh, unlike uh, the medical system, a number of people simply don't go to the dentist. Uh, the result is that we've got an epidemic of poor dental health in this country. Dental disease is now one of our most pressing public health problems. In short, there really isn't any rationale for treating uh, our teeth and our mouth as separate from the rest of our bodies. Um, now, this has a very direct medical impact. As I said earlier, dental disease can cause pain, which can affect people's sleep. It can lead to malnutrition and ultimately to serious infection. And this is particularly true of those people who have chronic diseases such as diabetes and heart disease. But apart from that immediate medical problem, the pain and discomfort associated with untreated dental disease, it can have a huge impact on other areas of people's lives. So people with poor dental health often have issues with self-esteem. They find it difficult to find work. It often puts you behind the eight ball in a job interview when you smile and your front teeth are missing. Likewise, if you're looking for a rental property, uh, the real estate agent isn't likely to look favourably on you if you have uh, a smile where most of your teeth are missing. It is a fact that uh, this is an issue that goes far beyond the medical system and, in fact, is an issue of social justice. And the fact that it's happening to so many people in this country is, of course, alarming, and the fact that it mostly affects those people in this country who are less well off is simply unacceptable. So a few, more, a few more words about the dimension of the problem that we face. Well, 61% uh, of Australians have intermediate, unfavourable or poor oral health. Uh, we know that that results in 20 to 30,000 hospital visits each year. We know that uh, an estimated 7 to 10% of visits to a GP are the result of untreated dental disease. And the problem is particularly bad for our young kids. The oral health of children and teens is steadily worsening. And in terms of our ranking in the OECD on these measures, uh, we are falling rapidly. There's a huge economic cost associated with untreated dental disease. Uh, between Medicare, uh, hospital admissions and the PBS, uh, the uh, problem uh, of untreated dental disease costs us up to $500 million each year. Uh, and that's not to say anything about the billions more that are lost in, as a result of uh, a lost productivity. Now, we have a two-tiered dental structure. We have 90 per cent of dentists in this country that uh, provide their services through private practice, private fee-for-service practice, but we also have a publicly funded uh, dental health scheme through the uh, state uh, dental health programs. Uh, approximately seven to 800,000 people are seen uh, in the states, um, but it's interesting that this is only about 11 per cent of people who are eligible for publicly funded dental treatment. And in large part, it's because uh, the, the system simply can't meet the huge demand that exists. So people on those uh, public lists face waiting times of several months, but often uh, up to several years. People simply give up and defer treatment. So we have uh, two health systems. We have uh, one health system for 
uh, uh, our body and another health system for our teeth. And within that uh, oral health system, we've got, again, a two-tiered system. We've got 90 per cent of services uh, provided through private dentistry, and we've got a public dental service which simply can't meet demand. Um, if you look at the costs associated with, uh, to patients associated with our medical system, uh, in terms of uh, general medical costs, about 12 per cent of costs are out-of-pocket costs. If you look at uh, hospitals, it's only in the order of 3 per cent of the total costs are out-of-pocket costs. When it comes to dental services, however, the total uh, out-of-pocket spend is about 60 per cent, a significant difference. And one thing's certain, this is a problem that's going to get worse. Uh, oral health uh, is uh, an issue that affects uh, older people, older people as much as it affects young people. Uh, and as people get older, um, we're being uh, the way dentistry is changing in, in this country is that uh, more people uh, have more teeth, and as a result, um, there's going to be an increased burden on the system. Of course, we got to this point largely through historical artefact uh, through the 70s and 80s. Uh, the dental uh, care system was left out largely as a historical artefact uh, from Medicare. Uh, and so we've ended up with this two-tiered system that can't meet the needs of the Australian community. To deal with this in 1994, the government introduced the Commonwealth Dental Health Program. The principal objectives were to essentially direct uh, care received by uh, healthcare care holders from uh, emergency uh, care to general dental care. So things like uh, teeth extraction, uh, uh, restoration, uh, ensuring that care is treated, and also to provide some basic preventative treatment. Uh, so essentially $245 million was spent over four years on this program. It was regarded as partly successful, but it was underfunded. Um, the uh, level of capacity within the service, of course, was limited. Um, so rather than improve the system, the uh, Howard government at the time decided to abolish it. Uh, it did, uh, to its credit, introduce uh, the chronic disease dental scheme. Um, that is a scheme which has helped people with uh, chronic disease whose, we know, their general health is, is more severely uh, compromised by poor oral health in the general population. Now, we know that the uh, dental scheme, the, the uh, chronic disease dental scheme, has had some problems. There are issues around how well the scheme is targeted, uh, the fact that uh, the scope of services that are provided, and the fact that uh, a large number of people who certainly warrant treatment aren't getting it. But it is a promising move. It's a start, and uh, uh, it's something that we should build on. And I want to talk a little bit about that in um, in the few moments that I have left. Um, we're currently uh, in the midst of a process where a number of dentists who have provided services under the scheme established by the Howard government in 2007 are currently being audited for the treatment that they are providing. Now, under the scheme, uh, a dentist is able to provide $4,250 worth of dental work over two years for any patient diagnosed with a chronic illness whose dental condition is deemed to make the illness Worse. Uh, it requires a GP referral. Uh, it means that uh, 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 the dentist needs to then provide a report back to the GP, and this is all managed um, through what's called a GP care plan. As I said, the aim is to improve the health of the chronically ill, for example, people with diabetes and heart disease. As we know, it's, uh, they are very, very important population groups um, in terms of uh, oral health, and we need to make sure that we address those groups as a priority. Uh, a total of 13 million dental services have been provided uh, to over half a million Australians. So that's no small feat. It's been done largely through uh, private dentistry and you know, by most measures the scheme has been uh, uh, moderately successful. There is, however, some criticism directed against the scheme. As I said, the issue of how well the scheme is targeted and the scope of services provided but one of the other criticisms that's been levelled at the scheme is the fact that the scheme is being rorted, um, and, uh, and that's the issue uh, that I'd like to talk about uh, today. Uh, the government on that basis has tried to close this scheme twice, and it's now uh, targeting a dentist through uh, Medicare audits, uh, which are causing uh, serious concerns amongst many dentists um, who have provided services 
through the CDDS. I want to talk about several examples. I want to talk about Wilma Johnson in Tasmania. Uh, she, uh, 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 Dr Johnson uh, has been audited for potential failure to comply with Medicare requirements. So let's look at what Dr Johnson did wrong. Dr Johnson received $35,000 in Medicare benefits for treating 34 uh, patients. Uh, in every case, the patient had a valid referral. In every case, the patient was entitled to the treatment. And in every case, the treatment was carried out in good faith. Uh, importantly, uh, there was no gap charged to the patients. Every single one of those patients was bulk billed. Now, Dr Johnson's crime was that she had not filed treatment plans in time and had not given written quotes to patients who were being bulk billed. Now, they are certainly part of the requirement under the scheme. However, it's clear that for a dentist who bulk bills a patient, uh, a written quote is unlikely to be of significant benefit, and certainly Dr Johnson uh, was not somebody who gained uh, directly from that practice. Dr Johnson is now being asked to repay about $30,000 for work that she provided to deserving Australians in good faith. I want to talk about Helen Arabidzitsis in Victoria, uh, who is uh, uh, from my home state, uh, practices at the Brunswick Family Dental Surgery. And the practice essentially had the same issue with treatment plans and quotes. Uh, she provided uh, a number of services. She was one of those people who uh, took up the scheme with relish, with gusto, providing services to people with conditions like diabetes and heart disease, uh, importantly providing treatment that will prevent those conditions from becoming worse. And she's now being asked to repay $713,000, which essentially is likely to bankrupt her dental practice. Now the question is, are these people rotting the chronic uh, disease dental scheme? Or are they, in fact, uh, guilty of small, minor uh, administrative errors? And should they uh, 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 essentially uh, be given some latitude in those areas? Uh, now, there is a professional services inquiry um, uh, uh, has highlighted uh, deficiencies in the education to dentists provided uh, through Medicare. So, in fact, in some cases, the information that was provided to these dentists uh, through uh, Medicare uh, wasn't adequate and did not adequately emphasise those two particular paperwork requirements. Now, it is true that information was uh, available. The question is how adequate was the training that was provided to those dentists. Uh, I've, in fact, spoken to dentists who did not see any materials from Medicare until the scheme had been running for several years. Uh, these dentists were accustomed to billing uh, Medicare for work under the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, and were essentially signing the same slips. Uh, they did need special attention uh, to inform them that the system under which they were operating was very different from the system they had been used to working under through the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, in fact, in, in, in the Greens' view, we should not tolerate rorting, and in, in a small number of instances we know that there have been some dentists who have taken advantage of this scheme. But the truth is, um, for many of those dentists who are being audited, uh, they were provided with uh, legitimate treatment. Uh, they were provided with important treatment. Uh, many of those dentists provided those treatment, uh, that treatment in good faith. And in fact, uh, as I said earlier, there should be some latitude given to those dentists for the treatment that they provided. Uh, ultimately, uh, the Greens believe that we can improve the chronic disease dental scheme. Uh, we know that uh, dental health is a pressing and urgent issue in this country. It's a matter of not just uh, uh, in ensuring that the health of the Australian community is improved, but also giving people the same life opportunities that uh, most of us enjoy through treatment of, uh, their dental, uh, of dental disease. 
Uh, we, the Greens, have long called for a publicly funded dental care system. We think the chronic disease scheme needs to be protected. We think it needs to be improved. Uh, we look forward to working with the government on this issue in the coming months, and we hope that in the long term we can achieve a universal and pu publicly funded dental scheme that Australians can cherish.